Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com with another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of December 19th, 2025. All right, let's talk about the mix console. Most of your work in Cubase is going to be done in two places. The first place being this big project window view, or you may be accessing, it's called the mix console, which then gives you quick access to all your faders, various things like that. Typically, the shortcut key that opens up your mix console is F3 although you may change that. And if you go up into the upper right of the project window, you have the option to open up the Mix Console in the lower zone with its own specific tab that says Mix Console. There's actually four different Mix Consoles you can use in Cubase. All of these are found if you go up to the Studio menu and then you come down, you can see that there's a Mix Console and then there's Mix Console 2, 3, and 4. These are very convenient options because then you can create a Mix Console that has just the information that you need and you can get back to it quickly. The mix consoles in general can be very customized. Of course, you can customize one mix and change its view many ways, but having the option for these dedicated mix consoles is just another way to speed the whole workflow up. Typically, I use my main mix console on its own dedicated monitor. It allows me to keep everything organized that way. And these secondary mix consoles, I can go to mix console two, and I've set it up so only my groups show up, or I go to the Mix Console 3, and I've set it up so only my effects can show up. And then the final Mix Console, it may just depend on the project. If I have something specific I want for a view in the mix, that's what I'll use this last Mix Console for. You can set up key commands to bring all of these mixes into view very quickly. As we've said, F3 will bring up your main mix, but if you go up to your edit, down to your key commands, type in Mix Console, you get a category under devices to show you the various mixes. And then you can click over in the area that assigns key commands. And they even have one to show the mix console in the project window. What I've done is stay with the theme of F3, but then use Shift, Alt, or Control, or some variation with the F3 key. And then when I'm looking at my view, I can hit F3, or I can hit Alt F3, Control F3, or Shift F3. And in this case, the Control Alt and F3 and I can quickly open or close it up in my main project view. As you're looking at your mix console, because there are so many ways to customize it, you want to become familiar with those various areas in case your mix console looks different than the way you expect it to. One of the first ways is up on the toolbar. If you right click, then you have all the options for selecting the various toolbar buttons and you can hide them or bring them into view. But also on the very far right, you have a button that says window layout and this gives you a bunch of options. In terms of what shows up in these various areas, in the racks, and the effects, and it's the same whether you're working down here in the project view, or if you open up your full mixer with the F3 key, again, you can go to the window layout button, and you can set things up so it looks the way you want it to. All right, let's talk about VCA faders. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifiers. Harkens back to the hardware that it's modeled after on mixing consoles. But the idea for us is it's one fader that can control a number of other faders. You collect a bunch of faders and send them to a group. As you turn the group volume up and down, it does indeed turn all the other faders up and down. But they remain just where they're at. On the other hand, when you actually use a VCA fader, which you start by selecting a group of channels, then right-clicking, say, add a VCA track to these selected tracks. And typically in Cubase, you get this fader with a green color. Now when I pull this fader down, you can see all these other faders that are connected to it move in relation to where the main VCA fader is. For lack of a better term, it's just a more accurate way to move faders up and down and maintain the true relationship between how they sound. At any time, you can take a particular fader, readjust its relationship any way you want, and then once again, when you take the main VCA fader, they will all move, keeping their relationship. What's interesting about the VCA fader, unlike all your other channels, immediately above you have the pan control. But when you look at a VCA fader, you have a series of different dialogues. First thing you have is a number that identifies the group, an actual name of that group. And then you have a drop-down list, giving you lots more options on how you can set these faders up. Another very interesting thing about the VCA fader is that it has no real channel in terms of volume, things you would do on any other normal channel, and yet you still get a meter readout. When I play this song, I can see all my other faders and I can see some information on my VCA fader, but there's no channel to open up. If I pull down the VCA fader, 
the channel information changes. But what's happening here is you're getting a readout of the sum of all these other connected faders. But it's strictly a visual thing and just another unique thing about a VCA fader in general. All right, let's talk about the control room. There's kind of two ways that you can send your audio and sounds out of Cubase to your speaker system. One way, if you come up to the studio menu and you come down to audio connections, there's a series of tabs here. And one of those tabs says outputs. If you click this button that says add a bus, and you take that bus and you assign it to whatever your left and right speaker system is, then typically when you play something in Cubase, you're going to hear it come out of those speakers. There's another way. If you come over to the tab on the far right, it's called Control Room. In order to use the Control Room, you have to actually turn this button on that enables it. Then in this case, you would hit the button that says Add a Channel. You would come down to Add a Monitor. Then you would take your monitor outputs and instead you would assign those to your left and right speakers. When you assign your left and right speakers in the monitor, when you go back to the outputs, you will see that they have switched to not connected. And the same thing applies if you go into the outputs and then reassign your left and right speakers. When you come back to the control room, then the monitor will say not connected. It's kind of an either or situation. With pros and cons, various benefits, depending on whether you go through the outputs directly or whether you move through the control room. Once you've enabled this control room, you come over to the far right tabs in this right zone area, you'll actually have a tab that says CR, standing for the control room. Before you've enabled this, it's basically just a blank area and you won't see anything here. Once it's been enabled, then it lights up with all different kinds of tabs and various knobs and buttons, areas where you can right click, make all kinds of choices. A whole set of extra features opens up when you use the control room. One little tip I want to share, you come down towards the bottom, there's a tab that says main, which you can open and close. And on the far right of that, there's a little icon that again allows you to activate and deactivate the control room outputs. If this button gets turned off, all the sound is passing through the control room will turn off as well. Sometimes you can find yourself in a situation where all of a sudden your project is playing, you can see all your LEDs are moving, all kinds of activity is happening, but there is absolutely no sound coming out of your system, which can lead you to a very confusing and frustrating place because you can see that all your faders are up and it looks like everything is operating normally. But what has happened, whether intentionally or accidentally, is this little blue icon gets turned off and there you have a project playing with absolutely no sound at all. So keep that in mind if that situation ever happens to you and it may save you a little time in your troubleshooting process. And if you're looking for complete explanations, along with step-by-step -step demonstrations of all these different topics, like the mix console and VCA faders and the control room in Cubase, be sure to click the link in the description of this video or stop by the digitalaudiomanual.com for more information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.